My name is Kathleen Martin, and my husband Ian passed away almost five years ago. Uh, he had cancer of the tongue, and after uh, two rounds of radiation, he then had an operation followed by chemo. All of these worked for short periods of time, but over two and a half years, the cancer reoccurred. As a caregiver, uh, I see the, uh, the journey as a long one uh, for him, uh, especially uh, when he couldn't speak very well in the beginning and towards the end really couldn't speak at all and uh, couldn't eat and swallow very well. As much as there were a loss for Ian, I came to realise the loss was just as difficult for me. The medical parts seen as 90%, but I think the social-emotional part has a greater value than the 10%. I had sort of uh, asked for a hug in the morning, um, a dance in the evening, because we like to dance, and it would be a slow dance, and I love you at bedtime. And that was what I needed for me, and we were able to do this. So these were constant in the beginning. The more the cancer came, the more um, this stage passed, but this stage began. There was all new learning for each new stage. So we continued what was known. We could still have a hug. We could still have a little standing on the spot. Down. It was just the fact that you were connecting again. And that just said volumes about uh, the need for the touch. I mean, in bed, we would, you know, Ian would have a habit of patting my bum and good night, <laughs> that type of thing. So, but this was really in each other's arms. So for me, it was free. We didn't have to go anywhere. It was easy to do. And the I love you continued for as long as speech continued until he pressed a machine with some other guy saying, I love you, on the machine. Communication and eating became a real wedge, I call it a wedge, between us, because I became almost like a, a police, policing the number of tins of liquid uh, food for him because swallowing was very difficult. The, the tongue was raw, but I would do a lot of pureeing and liquefying. I jokingly say this, but I'm never proud of myself. But I went from Nurse Nightingale to Nurse Ratchet some days where, where, where I, I was relentless uh, on the food. You know, I, I was, I felt for him that he couldn't speak and articulate how he was feeling, but I felt more for myself that um, if you don't eat, you, you, this is your lifeline, and you're you're putting me in charge of your lifeline, and I didn't want to be in charge of it. So the solution was that after Ian's afternoon nap, we would have couple time. And that would be uh, whether Ian was writing notes or listening to me, we would sit through here. And if he wanted to feed, that was his choice, because he could still write notes. Uh, we'd listen to some of his music. We'd listen to music. We'd look up our photo albums, it, but it was our time. 
I'm very good at knowing what I need and how to compensate. I just wasn't good at knowing how I was still having the odd dance and we're still doing that and the hugs and that. But some nights, I love you, was very hard. It was hard for Ian to say it and he's not going to write a note. So it was kind of a one-sided, you know, I love you. So it became more um, a conscious awareness that I was needing help uh, more for my emotions. And then I got a call and I met with a very, very um, fine young intern at uh, Princess Margaret who, once she we got a little bit of the background, told her about the dance at night, uh, told me that, uh, and said to me, that she saw that our dance floor had become uneven. And it was no longer level, and neither, you know, neither were we. Um, and that just put things in perspective, it gave me a license not to feel, um, that things had to be level anymore, also gave me license to view that I was still okay and I wasn't as mean-spirited as I was feeling <laughs> I was. Uh, so I attended, uh, every time Ian had an appointment, I made an appointment uh, beforehand for uh, to see her. And after a few weeks, she asked if Ian would come. And I said, well, I'll ask. And I think he maybe thought, because it was for me, it was something he could do for me. And it was excellent because it allowed me to take myself out of myself with someone there as someone that could be totally objective. When it was just being and I trying to converse on, well, you said, and you didn't say it. Well, if you told me, or, you know, all of these things that we tend to maybe shield when somebody's sick or you shield your own feeling. I was Nurse Nightingale and they say, oh, you're so patient, Kathleen. And then I swallow all this guilt again because I am patient. I know I'm a patient person, but this changes it, I say it brings out the worst in you when the journey becomes too long. And it brings out feelings that maybe lie dormant, I don't know. But this just scoops them up. And you find yourself, um, I mean, I never swore. I worked with children. I would say sugar because <laughs> I would never want... I've even said the F word during this journey, and I'm honest about it in my writing. So I, I just say what I'm saying here, that times I didn't like me, why would anybody else like me? And I think I'm gradually forgiving myself.